oceans and climate change. Why are oceans so important? Although different parts of the ocean have different names, such as the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean, they are all part of one big mass of water called the Global Ocean or World Ocean. The Global Ocean covers around 71% of the Earth's surface, almost 140 million square miles or 360 million square kilometers and is home to billions of living organisms from tiny bacteria to the gigantic blue whale. Many creatures depend on the ocean for food, shelter and a home. This includes humans, since at least 60% of the world's population lives along the coastline. Lots of jobs rely on the oceans. These include fishing, shipbuilding, energy supply, oil, gas and renewable energy and tourism. The ocean helps to keep the Earth's temperature and weather stable. It also provides us with free food and plenty of oxygen. In fact, 70% of the oxygen in the air has come from the ocean. That's far more than rainforests produce, though of course trees are important too. How is the ocean linked to climate change? When humans burn fossil fuels, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. This stops heat from escaping back into space and causes global warming. The global ocean soaks up about 90% of this extra heat, but many ocean plants and animals can't cope when the water temperature rises. As the Earth heats up, polar ice caps and glaciers begin to melt. Penguins, polar bears and other animals are losing their homes and it is difficult for them to find food. As the ice melts, sea levels begin to rise. Eventually, this could cause mass global floods. Whole islands could end up underwater. The ocean controls not just the Earth's temperature, but also the weather. Scientists predict more and more storms, tsunamis and hurricanes as a result of climate change. Ice contains fresh water. When this melts and mixes with the ocean's salt water, this affects the levels of oxygen, carbon and nutrients in the water. The ocean soaks up a lot of the extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This makes the ocean too acidic. Again, many animals and smaller organisms can't adapt quickly enough to these changes. Plankton are an important part of the ocean's food web. They struggle to survive in warmer water because there is less oxygen. Since 1950, 40% of the world's phytoplankton have been killed off due to warming oceans. Sewage, litter, oil and chemicals all eventually find their way into the ocean. They can destroy whole ecosystems and kill marine life. Some animals get caught in plastic packaging or eat it by mistake. Others get covered in oil from oil slicks caused by damaged pipelines or oil tankers. When coral becomes stressed, they get rid of all the algae living inside them. This makes them lose all their colour, so we call this coral bleaching. Eventually they die because the algae were their main source of energy. Coral bleaching happens when the water becomes too warm or when coral are exposed to chemicals, such as those found in sun cream. Scientists have predicted that by 2050, the ocean will be too warm for coral to survive unless we make drastic changes. How can I help? In 2016, over 100 countries signed the Paris Agreement they agreed to work together to reverse climate change. But you don't have to work for the government to have an impact on climate change. Greta Thunberg is a great example of this. Although just a normal teenager, she got the attention of the media and world leaders because of her determination to make the world a better place. If public protests and big speeches aren't your kind of thing, then there's still a lot you can do. Even small things make a difference. Things like picking up litter, even if you didn't drop it, using reusable bottles, turning the tap off while you brush your teeth, taking shorter showers, recycling as much as possible, walking to school or taking public transport, and avoiding buying things that come in plastic packaging. Together, we can help tackle climate change and save the ocean.